Hi everyone, my name is Chantelle and welcome to another video. It is the first Friday of the month and today I'm creating the 11th Harry Potter Matchbox Diorama for you. If you would like to catch up on all the other ones, I will leave a link in the iCard section. So let's see what the 11th Harry Potter Matchbox Diorama will be. Just removing all the previous ones. It is the Apothecary Slug and Jiggers. So let's get into this one. As with all the previous ones, I am creating my own matchbox. If you would like to craft along or create your own matchbox dioramas, the a link to the website where I found the pattern, which has a lot of other box patterns as well, is in the description box below, as well as all the dimensions that I use to create these little matchboxes. So I don't do this often, but for this one, I actually glued together the matchbox to start with. Normally I have to cut out windows and all that kind of stuff, which I am going to do for the front cover of this matchbox diorama. However, because this is a shop, only the front of the shop will have windows and a door. After mapping out what I need to cut out of the front cover of the matchbox, I am now going to cut out all these pieces. Then from a separate piece, I am making this kind of zigzaggy thing that eventually will become a window, which you can see me cut out here. Then the top window needed to be a little bit bigger, so I am cutting out an extra piece at the top. And by creating another zigzaggy thing, as um, that would describe that best, I suppose, I am creating another window for the top part. This is time consuming and tedious work, but I actually like doing it because it probably has to do with the, um, with the detail in it. And then after cutting out all the windows, I am gluing the zigzag part, that's where I put the glue on, behind the front cover so it all fits into place. Then for the slanted roof that is in the middle of the building, I am putting a thicker piece of cardstock, or it's actually chipboard, and Cutting that to size and gluing it into place. I am putting the same thickness of chipboard at the top of the top window and at the base of the bottom window. Then let's skip ahead and here is a painted window paint for you. Um, I just started painting and I forgot to turn on the camera. That's basically how it works when you have no footage there. So um, the base window is a deep purple. The top part of the building is a uh, like a lavender kind of color. And then the roof is a gray. And I'm going to add details with the gray and a dark brown, which I mix with the gray and the black. And I'm going to add details to the building. With a very fine micron pen or fine liner, whatever you have on hand, I am adding the details to the building, like cracks in the building and the brick texture. And I'm also writing down the name of the apothecary. However, I will make this white in the end. Then with some very watered down black acrylic paints, I'm going to add the shading to the building to age it up a little. Of course, we need some acetate for the windows as well. So that is what I have added behind the windows here. And then with a, what is it? What did I use? An Artline 725 permanent marker. I am adding the, um, the leading to the windows. Then 
And this is what we have so far. Moving on to the interior of the building, I have decided to use beads as being the vials and bottles and whatever you can find in the apothecary. And um, I, th I think it turned out pretty cute. It's, it's nice and shiny, so it reflects the light really well, so you see what, what is where. And um, yeah, I'm also doing that to the top window as well, just so you can see that little bit of detail from the outside. Now, my creative mind was struggling a little bit on what to do for the interior, like the top part of this building. Um, obviously, it's a tall building, it's in diagonally, and um, just like Ollivander's, it must have a top part there. So what I've decided to do is um, I'm making it a dark plum. Well, it, it will change color because this is the first layer, but then I changed color after this. There we go. and. I decided to put two doors and some shelves with books on them, which I just draw in with um, acrylic paints and a Posca marker. I did this so it looks like someone is living there, however you would not be able to see that interior standing in the shop below because you would be able to see up in this case. There's not a lot of references on the internet for Slug and Jiggers. I could find one image, uh, which is very detailed and fantastic artwork. However, that is so detailed that I can't possibly put that into uh, this building. In the meantime, I've made a uh, spiral staircase, which I have not done yet. I have made many staircases in these um, Matchbox dioramas, not the spiral one yet. And here I am adding the shelves to the back of the store. And this will be the counter of the store, which is the first thing you see when you walk in. And I'm just painting that a purple and then I'm going over with a white to um, highlight all the details and age it up a little bit. The floor, I kept a simple brown, so it's a brown acrylic paint. And then whilst the paint is still wet, I am going in with a white acrylic paint just to blend it in a little bit. And then with a black Posca pen, I am going to add these black panels to the counter. And with a white gel pen, I am adding the details here. And then of course we have to glue it all into place. So this is the part of the doors that I was talking about before. This is just me painting in the doors and then adding the um, floors that are there. And of course we need some railing. It's been a while since I've last done this in one of these matchboxes. So um, <laughs> I have to get back into that. Uh, but I, I think it looks all right in the end. Adding the last details and let's have a look what it looks like. And this is it for the 11th Harry Potter Matchbox Diorama. I really love the purple aesthetics of this building combined with the shiny bottles. If you are going to give this a go, please tag me on Instagram. I would love to see your creations. If you would like to support me, you can do so by signing up for my Patreon. You can find the link in the end card or in the description box below. And if you're new here, welcome! Please don't forget you can click the subscribe button to become part of the Raven family. Thanks so much for watching, stay safe and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!